when my heart was around I knew it was gold Someone could change it Like an alchemist of old Took him along Gave my heart birth Now I love's more precious Than anything on earth Transformation I love my V. Now what time is it? Well, my it's complete. quarter to two. Why are we when waiting I'm for him? It's really me. nice outside. We should just go outside and take a walk or something. Fine. AJ, I thought we trashed that song six months ago. Yeah, I know. Billy's been working on it when you guys aren't around. I kind of like it. Billy's V8 is a sorry ten-year-old hunk of rust. Hot wheels. No buddies. Sorry I'm late. Where have you been? We've been waiting almost an hour. No, I know. I'm sorry. Well? What? Where were you? Destiny. It's no big deal. Oh, come on, Billy. Where were you? I ran out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> the revenge of the gas guzzler. Look, it could have happened to anybody. Yeah, you just filled it up two days ago when we went to the baseball game. I know, I know, and I was driving Janine to her job. She was not happy. It was bone dry. I had to hitch to the station to get gas, shoot fuel in the carburetor to get it started again. It was unbelievable. Shit about that car my uncle was selling. It got good mileage. Yeah, and had the zip of a riding lawnmower. It wasn't my style. Well, maybe you wouldn't have run out of gas today. Don't worry. It's not going to happen again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not going to happen again. Happen again. Happen again. <laughs> Billy, did you know that oil is a non-replenishable resource? Well, I mean, it took a million years to form, but it, it will renew itself, well, in another million years. <laughs> yeah, but people don't want to wait that long. You know, what we try to do is get it all out now. I mean, we do the best we can to do that. You know, we've been working these fields for decades. And How old is this field? This field's about 50 or 60 years old. Ooh. You know, when we first discovered the field, the wells were producing on their own energy, back to the gushers, like you're used to seeing right. on TV. Yeah. The oil was just flowing. But you know, after the well finishes flowing and, and uh, producing on its own energy, we've only recovered maybe 20 or 30 percent of the oil that's in place in the ground. Really? So there's still a lot to get out down there. I mean, uh, well, is the oil just kind of in a big, like, underground lake? <laughs> a lot of people think that, but it, actually that's not how it is. Uh, the reservoirs, most of them, are composed of tightly compacted sand and rock, much like uh, if you can envision a sponge, but a hard sponge. And the pores between that rock and sand are filled with oil. So you need to force it out somehow. You could pump, like pump down water. Oil floats on water. You could pump it down and, and force it up that way. Exactly. That's a, that's a good idea. And a matter of fact, that's exactly what most of the industry did as their second try to get oil out of the ground. You know, the water injection process uh, revolves around the fact that the water actually imposes energy in the reservoir and helps the oil flow towards a pressure sink, which this is producing oil right here. So this is pumping, this is taking the oil up that the water is, is pushing. That's right. The water's pushing, but it's not pushing hard enough to get the wall all the way to the surface. So we need a mechanical, artificial mechanism to actually help get the oil and water out of the ground. So after the, the water injection, I mean, then you've pretty much you've got the oil out of the ground, right? Not quite. Then we've only gotten maybe 40 or 50 percent of the oil that's underground. Right, that's our reaction. We're thinking, well, what can we do now to get the oil out of the ground? Once you've used the water, I mean, what else can you get down there maybe to force the oil up? There's various different ways to do it. Uh, polymers, uh, surfactants, soap suds. Now the process we're using on this field, on our third try to recover the oil, is CO2 flooding. Hmm. We uh, get the CO2 to the injection well via this line here. Where's this coming from? 
this is coming from our CO2 source uh, reservoir. It's about 300 miles away. Uh, wow. The so it takes a lot of CO2 to, to do this kind of pumping. Yes, it does. The way we use the CO2 is we inject in these wells that were existing water foot wells. This process utilizes existing water injection wells where we inject CO2 and water in an alternating fashion, which forces the enhanced oil towards the center producing well. Well, the CO2 mixes with the oil mm -hmm. in what we call a miscible form that helps to move the oil through the reservoir in, in ways that the water flood could do it. The CO2 actually goes in places where the water couldn't. And that recovers another 20% uh, of the oil in place or so. Uh, but even then, we haven't recovered all of it. Mm. Okay, so that whole mixture, I mean, that whole mess comes up here, right? That's right. You can see there's five producing wells that come into this central facility for the oil, water, and gas to be separated. Through this header system, each well is automatically switched into this separation vessel where we do separate the oil, water, and gas on a first phase process. Now, this tank doesn't actually do anything. I mean, the oil and water and gas would separate naturally because of their densities. The water on the bottom, oil floating on the water, and the gas on top. Exactly, that's right. And we take advantage of Mother Nature there by just giving it a place to do its natural thing, as it were. The oil, water, and gas separate and we tap in in the various places of the vessel where the fluids are going to reside. So we can suck pretty much pure water uh, from the bottom and then oil from the middle and gas from the top. So what is it you enjoy most about what you do? Well, I really like being able to be creative in my job. There's a lot of opportunities to find new and better ways of doing things. Uh, you know, my engineering background gives me the foundation for, for understanding the knowledge that exists, but. The artistic side of engineering also gives you the ability to create and take that foundation and take it a step further where, where, where nobody's really been before. It's really fulfilling a uh, feeling. So, I mean, speaking of breaking new ground, you know, I've been thinking, what are we going to do when there is no more oil? Well, that's a good question because, you know, we don't rely on oil just for gasoline. We rely on it for pharmaceuticals and uh, polyester and even our records and CDs and tapes. It's become a whole mm. way of life with us. Yeah. I mean, finding substitutes for all that kind of stuff is going to be it's going to be really difficult. You're right. It's quite a challenge ahead of us. Our industry has a big challenge, and, and we're going to need help like you to get it done. <laughs> well, mm, hope so. But it won't last forever So baby you better go slow The love limit's posted and the light's flashing red You're headed for disaster around those curves up ahead Those dangerous curves up ahead Around those dangerous curves up again. Hey! Yeah, that's hey, that's what you need, an electric car. With a wicked long cord! <laughs> no, a battery. You just plug it in, charge it up, and you're cruising. Yeah. Zero to sixty in about two minutes, I bet. No, I read about an electric car that can get to sixty faster than some sports cars. And I bet electricity is a lot cheaper than gas. Uh, I don't know. You should have heard my dad when he saw our last electric bill. Hey, can we still practice here? Yeah, he's cool for now. Well, an electric car wouldn't cause so many pollution problems. Oh, really? Hey, did you ever think about where electricity comes from? Yeah. Take coal-burning power plants. They're sulfur in coal, and you have to get that out somehow. Yeah. <laughs> and cleaning coal costs money. I mean, besides the sulfur that you take out, there's still carbon dioxide left. And that adds to global warming. Global warming? That's not for real. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Look, it isn't. It's just a bunch of theories and guesses right now. Nobody really knows for sure. Yet. Anyway, not all electricity comes from coal. How about dams? Watch your language, young man. Dams generate electricity. And they flood beautiful valleys. They don't pollute the air. My grandfather's hometown is now a lake. 
said before the power dam, it was a really great place. Ruined fishing on that river, too. So what do you suggest? Nuclear power. Nuclear? Nuclear. Yeah, look, no flooding, no global warming. Oh, come on. It's so expensive, they don't even build the plants anymore. Not to mention radioactive waste, which lasts thousands of years. Well, that can be buried. In old mines, you just return it to the earth. Oh, really? And what are you going to do when the nuclear plants need to be torn down? Are you going to bury those, too? You're going to need a lot of mines. There are a lot of mines. So, how's anybody ever going to decide this? Well, people have to look at the pros and cons and then choose. You know, we keep saying people, but that's us. At some point, we're going to have to make the decisions. Okay, I got an idea. Pop a sail on top of your car. <laughs> a sail car. No, really, I've seen them use those in the desert. So what would I do when there's no wind? Use AJ. Right. <laughs> no, no, what you need is a solar car. Solar power. No, 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 check it out. All that energy comes from the sun, right? But it takes like millions and millions of years for it to turn into oil or gas or coal. But look, it's instant energy. This is the material that they use to make solar cells. You can see that they have to slice it real thin mm -hmm. in order to make a solar cell. In fact, they don't work if you have just a chunk like this and put it out in the sun. It doesn't create any electricity. Um, so you have to slice it real thin like this. So these are different shapes. Is that um, change the amount of electricity that you can get out of them? Yeah, you would design a different shape or a different size depending on what you wanted to do with that cell. Okay. Well, it seems like you could use the sun to do anything. It seems like you could use it to run your cars and your house and I don't know, it seems like you could run everything with it. Well, there are some problems with solar cells. I mean, for instance, you can take a look at this silicon mm -hmm. and you have to do a lot to the silicon in order to turn it into a solar cell. So it can be pretty expensive. There is another problem with this solar cell. You just can't produce enough electricity out of this to run something like a steel plant. Well, couldn't you put it like a whole bunch of them together or like make a really big one or something? Do you, Mad, do you know how many it would take to do that? Not really. Well, you need the area the size of a town in order to power something like a steel mill. Well, how about concentrating the effect of the sun or like making the sun stronger? That's a good idea. We use something like this, in fact. Do you know what this is? It looks sort of like a, like a magnifying glass or something. Have you ever used one before? A magnifying glass? Uh-huh. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like when you take a magnifying glass and, and you can burn holes in newspapers or kill ants or something. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's the same concept we'll use. We'll put it on a solar cell and uh -huh. get more light, just like you suggested. Look, I'll even show you how we do it. Look at this box here. If I use the lens and I, I put the focal point right on the box, look what happens. Woo! So this little piece of plastic could solve everything. Well, not exactly. Um, this solar cell gets really hot. And the hotter the cell is, the less efficiently it works. So we're going to have to keep it cool in order to keep it working really well and really efficient. I'm starting to think there are problems with every source of energy. Well, you know, there, you're right. There are problems with all sources of energy. You name it, coal, hydro, nuclear, there are some problems. But we think we've got the solution, or a possible solution, to this heat problem in terms of photovoltaics. This is a concentrator system. And these are the lenses up on top of this concentrator. Well, these are flat, not curved, right? Right, they're flat, so they're a little different than those ones we had. Oh, it's really bright in here. Yeah, be careful. There's a lot of concentrated light, and it goes in lots of different directions. But you can see that you're getting a lot of light down onto the solar cell and producing quite a bit of electricity. And there's different things in the back here. What are those, like, fins or something? Those are heat spreaders. They use these fins on the back of this module. And what does that do? Well, it increases the surface area of the back. Uh -huh. And so when the wind blows past it, it gives it increased area, and you can get rid of more heat that way. Oh, I see. Wow, it's moving. Yeah, the computer in it tells it when to move and how much to move so that you're continuously following the sun. I like being outside. Uh -huh. I really like working on a problem that many people are interested in. I mean, there's lots of people in this world that are trying to solve problems. And if I can make an impact on how we can get electricity out of a clean source as opposed to using something that produces 
a lot of pollution, I think that that's important to me to be able to solve a problem like that that many people are interested in. Do you think solar energy will ever replace gas or oil? No, I don't think so. It certainly has its applications. It has places where it would work that make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, in a lot of third world countries where they don't have electrical distribution systems, mm -hmm. it's really easy to put in a solar system, a photovoltaic system, to power, say, pumping. Maybe they want to mm -hmm. pump water for their um, uh, fields mm -hmm. in order for, to irrigate the crops and photovoltaics are a good application there. Yeah. You can also use it to power up refrigerators. They make solar refrigerators now where you can hmm. keep vaccinations cold in places where they don't have any medication. And that's a real good application for photovoltaics too. That's it for me, man. I gotta go pick up Janine. <laughs> She's still talking to you. Think you have enough gas to make it? Yeah. Used every last penny I had and I still didn't get a full tank. Then you can give me a ride. Oh, so now you want to ride in my horrible gas guzzler. Until I can buy an electric car. You guys should all ride skateboards, then you wouldn't have these problems. My trusty steed is always there when I need him. Hey, AJ, you might want to take a ride too. Why? Because there's a wicked thunderstorm coming up. <laughs> Come on, rides around the house. <laughs> 